So hey guys. This is your favorite ultimate fanfiction. So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto was the Dragon King of Konoha and Elemental Nations? But before we start, remember to subscribe and like this video. Now let's start. Hero, a man of distinguished courage, admire for his brave deeds and noble qualities, a man who will do the right thing and fight for justice and freedom. Every children wish to be like that, to fight evil and protect the weak, also to look cool, but for those of the elemental nations is nothing more than a fairy tale for the children knowing that the world can be unfair and cruel. Maybe the world lost hope. Where fathers and mothers bury their children, when it should be the other way around, where war is at the corner, where children are trained to kill and die for their nation. Maybe that's why the world lost its hope in heroes. But, what if I tell you about a story of a hero of the elemental nations, a man who wasn't born a hero but learned to be one? This is the story of the Dragon King of Konoha, his name. Naruto Dragneel, an enraged chunin shouted to our protagonist. Naruto took the moment to look back. There was a lot of chunin after him. Grinning, he makes the great idea to taunt his persecutors. Come on guys, three more laps and you can take a much needing bath said a laughing redhead. The mob of Chunin increases their speed to teach a lesson to that cheeky brat, who upon seeing the new speed of his followers tried to move his legs faster. But he knew they were going to catch him soon, thinking quickly the maelstrom ran to the nearest district. Naruto saw the commercial district and dive in to hide between the civilians, trying to look like a person who hasn't run a marathon, after controlling his heartbeats, he walks where the more crowed area was, but before Naruto could claim victory, the persecutors surround him, blocking any way to escape. Seeing no way escape he decided to make his last stand. You will not take me alive! exclaimed the fugitive before getting a rubber chicken out of his pocket, his followers were baffled seeing the rubber duck and asking where did that come from. From the Chunin point of view they could see some rubber ducks in his pockets. The redhead watch as one of the Chunin throws himself to him. His sight became better, he could smell him, his reflexes were ready to evade upon notice. All this took effect in two seconds. If the Chunins were putting more attention they would see that his eyes gain a gold tint. Using his new senses he waited and when he thought there was a good distance. Smack civilians were amused watching a kid smacking Chunins left to right with a rubber chicken, more when a ninja lost his patience and unsheathed his tonto. Laughing, they saw a child fighting a swordsman with an apparently hard as steel rubber chicken. Naruto was exhausted and in his last leg but his opponent was. Worthy, to be able to withstand Mr. Sasuke, he gained his respect, but it was time for part 3 of the prank called, The Badass Escape. Grinning, he let a whistle waiting for his friend to pick him up. Damn brat and his rubber duck, the worst thing is that he make him fight seriously. He heard the whistle but for what, he look up and saw his answer. Thinking quickly the Chunin channel chakra to his legs and ran to capture the objective. Naruto laugh at the Chunin trying or better yet failing to capture him. He was too late because in that moment he felt weightless and saw the floor leave his feet. Naruto says his goodbye with a peace sign, leaving a screaming swordsman. Thanks happy, mission complete, said Naruto who was making poses to the people looking up. I, was the shout of happy, a blue cat with white wings and best friend of Naruto. They started to talk about the newest prank and what they are going to eat. Naruto. A loud scream broke the conversation of the flying duo. Looking down they saw something that made them pale, Uruka Amino and he was not pleased. Happy stopped moving which brought his companion attention. Happy you don't want to go to school right? Said a serious Uruka. And ooh. Fear was present in happy eyes. Then you will give me Naruto, right? His voice changed from serious to enthusiastic in an instant. Poor Uruka, he doesn't know that their friendship was more important than a simple thread and noth. Okay. Before dropping Naruto. Traitor! Shout the betrayed redhead and crashed to the ground making a crater. Why hello there Naruto fancy seeing you here, said Uruka. Who was in the front of a human crater? A tied Naruto was in the back of the classroom glaring at his teacher, he didn't need to be tied or put a tap on his mouth. Class, tomorrow is the graduation exam, for that let's have a mini exam to what you will need, said Uruka loud and clear for his class to hear, who at hearing this groan and sigh. Now don't give those looks, when you hear your name come forward and make the bunshin no jutsu. With that explaining he walks to his desk, 
naming his students to perform the technique. Hey Naruto, can you finally make a bunshin? Taunt a student at the back of the classroom. Shut up, said Naruto in a low voice after. Freeing himself of the ninja wire. Ha, huh, it's useless Uruka sensei you can't control the maelstrom, thought our maniac Dragnu. Narumi Uzumaki, said Uruka. He was informed of Narumi large chakra pools and was told that she had another form of bunshin no. Jutsu. Cage bunshin no jutsu. Uruka eye widened at the numbers of clones that were in the class, but then he noticed that Narumi was looking at some clones of her in surprise. Good work Narumi, you need to practice chakra control to control the numbers you want to make, pointed out the scar-faced Chunin. All right Uruka sensei said a cheerful blonde who finally was able to perform a variation of bunshin no jutsu now boy's turn please wait for your name order uruka at seeing most of his male students ready to jump and show off to their female classmates boys sigh were the thoughts of the teacher can you imagine what we could do with so many clones of her said the bully of the class to his friends who laugh at the idea naruto gritted his teeth when he heard that yeah Narumi was pretty and in a few years will become drop dead gorgeous. It would be a cold day in hell to let people harm her in any way or form. Hey bastard, watch your mouth before you lost it. Threatened Naruto. He didn't care if they were stronger or got in trouble. Did you say something, retard child? said the bully with a smirk, knowing the impact that will have on him. Naruto make a forced grin, but inside was hurt hearing that nickname, all because. Naruto Dragnil asked Uruka when his name was next. He look up to where his desk is. Frowning, he knew that grin all too well. He will have remembered to ask what happened after class. A majority of the class had a grin knowing what's going to happen. Bunshin no jutsu, shouted Naruto desperately trying to use chakra. Minutes pass and he heard the classroom laugh. A frowning Uruka began to think. The hand seals were right, but there was no smoke. Indicating usage of chakra, analyzed the chunin. He needed to talk to the Hokage. Naruto lowered his head, he tried to use chakra but it was like there. Was no chakra in him. Naruto you need to practice more, I know you see a, eh? he stopped listening, he already feels like crap and failure. How was he supposed to reach his dream when they are destroyed in front of you? The next day Konoha was eager to know the next generation of genin, after all most of the class were clan heirs. Students were preparing for the exam. Watching the classroom they could see some were anxious and others were confident in their skills. Uruka Amino size most of the students were passing, which was good thing but his mind was in other place, thinking if his favorite student practice enough to pass. He broke out of his world when he heard the voice of his fellow teacher Mizuki. Naruto Dragnil. Uruka waited for said student to enter. He let a small gasp when he saw the condition that Naruto was in. He was panned his eyes were red from crying or need of sleep. Are you ready Naruto? Asked Mizuki not bother with the condition of said student. Uruka glare at the lack of care for a kid who was in no condition to take the exam. But he knew that Naruto will not listen and will want to continue the exam. Yes, was the short answer. Hearing this Mizuki grins. First make the henge no jutsu, said the white haired. Henge? Shout Naruto, seconds passed and nothing happened. Well, chuckle. You can still save yourself with the other two, so don't worry. Uruka didn't know if his friend was trying to help or mocking him. Now the Kawarimi know. Jutsu? I don't know the hand seals, said Naruto with a small voice that almost didn't hear it. That's what happens when you don't put attention to class Naruto. Commented a cheerful Mizuki. Enough? Mizuki shut the fuck up. Uruka had enough of Mizuki mocking his student. Naruto can you please make a bunshi? Bunshin no jutsu, black smoke filled the classroom. Uruka smiled thinking that Naruto finally could make clones but when the smoke dissipated there was no clone to speak of. Naruto gritted his teeth in frustration. He trained all day and night to make clones. All the determination, blood and tears. Were for nothing. Damn it, thought our depressed protagonist. Walking in the street to his favorite ramen stand, dark thoughts fill his head. There was nothing more to do. His dream were destroyed. His father would be ashamed to have a son like him. Hey Naruto, said a man walking behind Naruto. Turning around, he said, What do you want, Mizuki? There was no sense to call him sensei now. I came to say sorry about today. Something was in my mind and was really happy, 
explain a really upset Mizuki, he could get an Oscar with that performance. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry, what he didn't want to talk right now, he just want to be alone. I know that you are upset, that's why I will tell you some really good news, said Mizuki who grin couldn't become wider that's for sure. There is a scroll that can help with chakra, I. Widened Naruto attention was full on him. A scroll that can help with his problem, maybe it could tell what I'm doing wrong. I guess you want to know more, nay? Chibi Mizuki was dancing in victory. It was so easy he didn't need to do anything. Yeah, how can I have one? An enthusiast redhead exclaimed with new hope. It's really easy you have to breathe, and with that the trader began to explain where was the forbidden scroll. Not knowing that he started to poke the sleeping dragon. In the middle of the night, the habitants of Konoha were sleeping soundly, not knowing the dangers that lurk in the shadows. Is in the night when enemies decide to attack and steal, taking the advantage of the darkness. Shinobis know how difficult is to guard. A single mistake could cost someone's life or property, for that, most of Anbu guard in the night and Chunin or Jonin in the day, it's an effective system. The Hokage Tower was silent, only the breathing of the guards could be heard. This building is the most guarded area for his many secrets. Secrets that can be used against the village. Inside the tower, a black silhouette began to travel through the halls. There was a full moon making darker the shadows, which he used them so nobody could notice him. Coming near the Hokage office, the intruder saw two guards at the door, both were Anbu if the mask was any indication. Taking a deep breath, he formulates a plan to bypass them and came to the conclusion to do what he do best. The black silhouette initiates his master plan. The Anbu were bored, looking for something out of place, when every day looks the same, and the dust in that desk was more noticeable than yesterday. Both were alert when a person began. Walking casually to the office, they narrowed their eyes upon notice of the person in front of them. If someone was inside the office, they would hear a strange event at the door. Brat, what do you want? was heard inside the office. Taicho. Watch out, he has a duck. Shout a voice past the door. There were noises of struggle. Arg. Quack. Oh god, it's so big. That's what she said, quack. The office became silent again before the door was open and the intruder enters, searching for the switch. He turned on the lights revealing the intruder to be Naruto. He started to observe his surroundings. It was a normal office. There was a desk, a bookshelf and chairs. Watching closely the bookshelf filled with books of politics, economy and records, he saw a book out of place. The book was about shades of gray. He didn't know there was that many shades. He grabbed the book and pulled it out. After a few seconds the shelf began to move, showing a secret room. Mizuki was right about the bookshelf, now to find the scroll. There were millions of scrolls, all in different sizes and colors, they were put in chests for easy transport. After searching for the biggest scroll, he found it at the back of the room in the forbidden section. Maybe it's so awesome, that people started to fight for it and became forbidden a giddy Naruto thought. Grabbing the scroll, he closed the room by putting the book back in the shelf and the bookshelf began moving to its original place. He put the scroll in his back and began walking to the door. When the door of the office opened and Hiruz and Serutobi enter, he saw two Enbu unconscious outside of the office with a duck sleeping nearby. He deduced that Naruto was in his office, he sighed he knows his grandson like the palm of his hand. Naruto-kun, what are you doing with that scroll, if I may ask? said a calm Hiruzen upon noticing the scroll in his back, he could tell Naruto was desperate, if his body language was any indication. Sorry Gigi, said the redhead taking steps back before him jump over the window and start running to the forest nearby, where the meeting point was. There you would read and practice the contents of the scroll, after that Mizuki will do the makeup test. He had the best luck to have his teacher, he will apologize to Gigi later, when he passes. Anbu exclaim a serious Hiruzen upon seeing Naruto running with the forbidden scroll, he didn't need to think twice to know something was up, someone was using him to have the scroll. After all, how he knew of the scroll and its location. Suddenly, a squad of his best soldiers stood tall and ready to success or die trying. Bring me Naruto Dragneel unharmed, order the third Hokage. If I see a single bruise on him, I will make you clean the Akamichi clan pipes with your toothbrush. Dismissed, with that said, the squad disappears in a blur. Time skip. In the forest of Konoha, Uruka was trying to find his student. When the Hokage order all shinobis to find him, 
He couldn't believe that Naruto stole the forbidden scroll. He began walking to the exit when he saw a group of shinobis shake their heads and said, Of all the things this take the cake, what's next? His imaginative father told him to take the scroll. Remembering the whispers, Uruka gritted his teeth and increased his speed. He was losing hope to find him when he saw red. Concentrating on the color, he could see Naruto reading the scroll. Jumping to the tree above him, he watches as his student getting irate and cursing. Naruto what are you doing? Shout Uruka. He needed to know why he stole the scroll, maybe then the Hokage could reduce his punishment. Ah! Uruka sensei what are you doing here? A surprised Naruto exclaim. He was exhausted trying to make one of the scroll jutsus but it was futile, he couldn't do any, even if he practice and read, the jutsu won't work. Tell me, why you stole the forbidden scroll? He needs to hear his answer before bringing him to the Hokage. I'm sorry, but I was desperate for a solution to my problem, said Naruto lowering his head in shame. He didn't want to steal from Gigi, but the offer was tempting to pass. Naruto, who told you about the scroll? This is it, the golden question. The answer will seal his fate as traitor or victim. Mizuki sensei did, he told me about the makeup test that you agreed on, said Hyper Redhead. He was soy he more time to practice to be able make a single jutsu. Uruka saw that his student was telling the truth. Frowning, Uruka never though his friend would become a traitor. Watch out, said Uruka when he heard the sound of a fuma. Shuriken cutting through the air. Thinking quickly, he tackled Naruto to the ground. He concentrated in his senses of hearing and sight to find the enemy. It seems you find our meeting point, said Mizuki who was in a tree branch. Not worried that Uruka knows of his treason, he will kill him and be done with it. So you're the real traitor, huh? Now he was 100% sure who was the traitor. Standing up, Uruka and a confused Naruto faced Mizuki. What's going on? said Naruto upon seeing his sensei throwing weapons at them. Maybe it was part of the test. Watching closely, he saw the hostile language of Mizuki. He gulped and started to shake. Naruto protect the scroll. It has forbidden jutsus that can put in danger our village. Exclaimed Uruka, who was observing his surroundings, analyzing what could prove useful to the coming battle. Why bother Uruka? You know who you're talking to, right? Aboard Mizuki said. Grinning, he thought it was time to incapacitate one of his enemies. After all, it's the retard child, the brain dead, the Kayubi slave, etc. Laughed the white haired upon seeing Naruto, who flinched to every name. Ha 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 ha. Who thinks that a dragon would raise a child, when dragon doesn't even exist, less raising a human? It's so funny that it hurts. Ha 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 ha. Oh, let's not forget his friendship with the Kayubi. I actually feel pity for him, delusional and a weakling who can't make the simplest jutsus or even use chakra, said a laughing Mizuki with tears in his eyes. Shut up, said Naruto. It was always the same, nobody believed him. Thinking he was retard or brain dead in believing a dragon raise him, some even said it was an illusion that he made to escape reality. People won't let their children play with him because of his dysfunctional brawn, it doesn't help that he fight everyone who badmouthed his dad, making him look like a soon-to-be psychopath criminal. Uruka saw Mizuki making hand seals while his student was in turmoil. Not thinking twice, he threw shurikens at him and run at him. Mizuki dodge trying to keep the hand seals but he saw Uruka coming at him, he had no choice that release his hands. Grabbing a kanai, he started to run to meet him face to face. Both shinobis were fighting at speed that no civilian could keep up, appearing in the center of the forest. Mizuki tried to stab him but before the kanai could connect. Uruka grabbed his wrist stopping the movement of the kanai. The scar-faced chunin throw a punch to his throat trying to close his trachea making it impossible to breathe. Mizuki saw his objective and used his other hand to intercept. Both were locked in a wrestle of strength, trying to overpower the other. Jumping opposite sides, they began to make hand seals at rapid pace. Here wins the faster that could make hand seals, and nervous as your worst enemy. Uruka was a teacher and knew about the hand seals of thousands of jutsus. Uruka saw his opponent making hand seals for a Kaden jutsu, he began making a defense jutsu. Kaden. Gokaku no jutsu, great fireball. Uruka opened one of his chunin pockets and grabbed a small scroll. Releasing its content was ten bottles of waters, he opened it and shouted. Sweden. Suijinheki, water formation wall. Mizuki saw the wall of water and sigh. 
he doesn't have time, the more they battle, Konoha would sense the usage of chakra and investigate. Uruka why do you protect that brat, he's already dead the moment the Kayubi took him as slave. Don't make me laugh, you and I know she's not the Kayubi and Naruto isn't a retard or brain dead, said Uruka out of breath, he needed to start training if this was his limit. Naruto stood numb, he tried to make a single jutsu but it was in vain, maybe they were right, he was already dead. But I can't give up, right? thought Naruto. Maybe he is not the smartest kid around or the strongest, but I know he will become the best shinobi. I have faith in him, after all I'm his teacher. He isn't a delusional or brain dead, he is Naruto. D-R-A-G-N-E-L, proud shinobi of Konoha and son of Igneal, said Uruka. He loke everyone else knows about finding a dragon named Igneal the fire dragon and Naruto father. At the begin he thought Naruto was lying like everyone else, but with time he get to know him, he saw not a liar, he saw a child trying to find his father. Whatever, said Mizuki who was behind Uruka with a kanai, he thrust his arm to stab him. Uruka could only eye widened and curse for not paying attention. Mizuki grins when he saw his plan success, let him talk and stab him in the back, but, he didn't saw the foot an inch from his face. Bam! Mizuki went flying and crashed into a tree, he spat a little blood. That's no bad for a rocky, said the white-haired who flinch at the pain of crashing. If you dare put a hand on my sensei, I'll kill you, while he said that, leaves were catching on fire, both shinobis started to sweat at the temperature. Naruto look up to show Mizuki his golden vertical slit's eyes. Ha! Huh. I could defeat you with one move, Mizuki's voice was full of arrogance. Naruto raised his hand showing a small fireball before he crushes it and his hand caught on fire. I show you how you can beat a person with one move, with that said our redhead was engulfed in flames. Karyu no Kenkaku, Fire Dragon Swordhorn, Naruto propel himself against Mizuki at high speed, hitting him with a powerful headbutt. Mizuki was sent flying up a second time with a pillar of fire. After a moment he crashed to the ground unconscious. With second degree burns. Uruka saw everything and thought. Maybe in the future, he will be more powerful than the Hokages, and he didn't even use hand seals, guess being raised by a fire dragon is not far from the truth. Uruka sensei are you alright? asked Naruto, he finally did it, he could make jutsus and without hand seals. Wait till I tell Narumi about it, she will be so jealous, were the thoughts of the redhead. Close your eyes Naruto, said a smiling Uruka, he was proud of his student know his new comrade. When Naruto closed his eyes, Uruka unwrapped his headband and tied it in his head. Now you can open your eyes, when Naruto opened his eyes, he saw his sensei smile and he heard. Congratulations, you are a genin of Konohagakure no Sato, he couldn't believe his ears, he made it, he was a shinobi. Uruka sensei, shouted Naruto before he tackled. Uruka. They talk and laugh and decided to celebrate with ramen. After that Naruto pass out with all the turmoil of emotions and training of the day, his body shut down. Naruto I know you will suffer and have many obstacles in your way but I know you will reach higher than anybody with that thought Uruka began walking to the village carrying the future prince. Kid, are you really going to have your picture taken like that? Said an old man with glasses. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just take it exclaimed naruto with exciting in his voice finally he was a shinobi and what better way to begin with a badass photo in his ninja documents whatever he crouched to the level of the camera and took the picture hokage office serutobi sweat drop when he saw the photo naruto had sharp teeth and snake-like tongue he was blowing a stream of fire like a dragon would from his desk hirazan could see the genin grin take it over he wasn't surprised by this why would he? He actually was waiting for this to happen. After Naruto learned to use the now named Fire Dragon release, he started to show some rather unique signs like when he's angry or frustrated, he would blow a stream of fire. Also, in cold days his body produces more heat while in hot days his body reduces body heat. E. Said Naruto. He took three hours to make that cool pose and now Gigi told him to take it again. But Gigi, the photo look awesome and intimidating. He tried to convince him. Sigh. Naruto, I don't have to tay. He couldn't finish when the door burst open and a child WN hair, and a small chip. In his teeth. 
His name is Konohamaru Serutobi, grandson of Hiruzen. Old man, this day I will beat you, shout Konohamaru with a shuriken in his hand. He charges yelling his victory over Hiruzen when he trip with his blue scarf. A bang was heard in the office. Leaving him face first in the floor. Konohamaru groaned at the impact, he tried to look like nothing happened. Looking around for the cause of his fall. You tripped me, he accused when he saw Naruto in the room. Hearing this, a tick mark appears in Naruto's forehead. This kid walks in here, trip himself over his own scarf and blame him. What did you say? Asked Naruto who grabbed Konohamaru by the scarf and pulled him to his level. Both glared each other and gritted their teeth. Put him down. He is the grandson of the great third Hokage, exclaimed Ebisu when he saw the ruffian attacking young master. Now that he knows I'm the grandson of a Hokage, he must be like everyone else's thought Konohamaru. What's the matter? Why don't you hit me? yelled Konohamaru before he smirked. You're no match for a grandson of a Hokage, he taunted. Like I care about that, he yelled back blowing a stream of fire. After that he releases him and punch him in the head. Yubaka, with the said he leaves fuming. Konomaru looked at his back and thought, he's different. Outside the office, when he closed the door, he turns around only to meet a cheerful Narumi with happy in her arms. Surprised, he was going to speak but Narumi spoke first. Naruto, it's good to see you, said Narumi who had a big smile upon seeing him. Happy was content eating his fish, he smiled at his. Precious duo and family. Remembering when they were little how much fun they had, he promised he will protect them, just like. Narumi promised to take care of them, yeah, a small family that he always wanted, coming out of the past he replied. I know, right? Asked a narcissistic redhead, she pouts at his answer and punch him in the arm lightly but you could see a small smile on her face. Both started to walk to the exit. Ha ha, come on, you fell for it? I, happy, whose side are you on? Asked Narumi sweetly, she hugged him a little bit tighter. A.H., yours ma'am, said a fearful happy, good boy, cooed Narumi who began to pet happy making him purr in delight. Naruto sweat drop at his bipolar friend, one second she the devil, the next she a caring mother. Sue, who do you want to be in your team? Asked Narumi. Right, she like everyone else thinks he passed with the class, Hiruzen announced the scroll incident will kept as secret from other. Um, I hope Shikamaru or Choji, Naruto answered, after all they're his best friends. He didn't saw Narumi huffed and turn her head away. When they exit the building, both inhaled the fresh air of the village. It was a sunny day, the sky was clear with a few clouds in between. Leaves were dancing in the wind. The small family began walking and having a conversation through the village, not noticing a child following them. When are you going to show me your house? Narumi whined. They lived at the orphanage but when Gigi let them live by themselves, she went with her Anbu guardian named Yuga Azuki. since then she tried to know where he live. It's a secret, Im, Happy is going to tell me, right little guy? She tried to reach the information by other means. Happy don't do it, I will give your 20 pound fish you always wanted, he begged. If she knows where his house is before being complete, all the hard work will be for nothing. After an agonized amount of time Happy decided, I don't know where we live Narumi, sorry. Announced Happy who was proud of his decision. More fish for him, yay. Ah it's okay, replied Narumi with a sweat drop, hearing footsteps. When they were crossing an alley, she became alert and tried to find the location of the person. She didn't need to look too much when she saw a kid following them rather close, how both didn't notice him. Do you need something? Was the question of Narumi trying to find the reason of their follower? Naruto stopped walking and started to sniff. He turns around and stares at the spot where Konohamaru was hiding. When Konohamaru saw him staring at me, he knew he was found and came out of hiding. Ha, huh, you are strong to be able to find me, he said with a smirk. He looked at Naruto. So from now on you will be my teacher, he declared to his teacher. No, he deadpanned. What, why, asked Konohamaru with his mouth agape. I don't wanna but you are the only one that can help me beat Gigi, I don't care. Boss please. That's not going to work, I beg you my lord. Nah, Narumi and Happy were watching the scene like a tennis match. Looking from side to side, 
Narumi giggle at Konohamaru kissing his feet and begging to his boss. Come on Naruto, you always want to have an apprentice. Why not EMM, Konohamaru, said the kid with hope in his eyes, why not? Konohamaru, asked a smiling Narumi, she already liked the kid, he was like a mini Naruto. I, agreed happy. Um, he murmured, while he strokes his imaginary beard. I guess I could train him a bit, he finished. Yes, you won't be disappointment, yelled Konohamaru who was jumping up and down. So what's first boss? I don't know, said Redhead. The group face fault at the declaration. Why don't you start with the basics jutsus Naru? She didn't finish when she remembered that Naruto couldn't use chakra, she look away not wanting to see him mad at her. Don't worry Narumi, I'm not mad at you said naruto who put a hand in her shoulder to calm her down hearing this narumi turn around and look at his smile she sighs in relief and gave a small smile now my little student narumi and i will be your teachers she will be teaching you chakra while i spar with you declared naruto after asking narumi for help to make a schedule so first thing we want to see your henge order his teacher hi shout konohamaru before making the hand seals blue chakra began to be seen. Henge. With that said a plum of smoke appears, when the smoke dissipate they could see a fat Narumi. How do I look? Asked a gruff male voice. Ha 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 ha, laughed Naruto rolling in the floor with tears in his eyes, not noticing a shadow behind him. What's so funny Naruto? Asked Narumi with a sweet voice and smile, but her eyes were red dots and her blonde hair was floating in nine different tails. Run boss run, said the gruff voice of fat Narumi. Naruto didn't need to think twice before running while laughing at hearing again the voice. Don't run away. Face it like a man, yelled Narumi throwing happy to Konohamaru before running after him. After running for hours in the village, Naruto tried to escape in a training ground only to be cornered. The she-devil was walking at slow pace at him, enjoying the look of horror in his face. Looking around she saw no one nearby and grinned. Ready to face punishment? No, please. Show some mercy, Narumi sama. Kukakuku nope. Naruto closed his eyes and braced himself for the pain, he didn't wait. Long before Narumi threw herself at him, both fell to the grass below. Goodbye, cruel world, were the final thoughts of Naruto. He waited to feel the pain, but he only felt her body on top of him, opening his eyes to see Narumi hugging him. Eye widened, he looks at her face to see a small smile. Narum, shut up, don't ruin the moment. What the hell, one minute she was going to kill him and now she was cuddling with him? Girls are weird. Baka, I haven't seen you since last month, I thought you didn't want to see me again, she explained. He flinched, he forgot that Narumi had a bit of confidence problems, he was her pillar of strength when they were children, even when she is a strong girl and stubborn, inside she's insecure about herself. He sighs and hugs her back a little bit tighter to let her know he was here for her. Hey, who do you think I am? He said. I promised I always will be with you. We are best friends, remember? He asked. He felt Narumi nod in his chest. Both stay there embracing in the grass while there was a breeze. His heart stare felt strange every time this type of situations occur. He lifts his left arm and call upon his fire, chakra, manipulating the fire. He made a flower and put it in her hair. The cool part is that he controls the characteristics of the fire, meaning it won't burn anything it touches. You look awesome, exclaimed Naruto upon seeing her blonde hair with a flaming flower. Huh? She lifts her head of his chest and look at him. He pointed at the small lake nearby. Whining about the loss of warm. She stood up and went to look at the lake. Narumi stared at her reflection with open mouth. She had a small red flaming flower in her hair. Turning around to ask about it, he said, this will be your proof to know if I hate you, when the flames dies it means I don't want anything to do with you. For now it means my feelings for you, said a clueless redhead. Narumi blush and was going to replied when both heard a scream. This is awesome, said the flying Konohamaru with happy. Landing, happy and Konohamaru high five, thanks. Konohamaru was going to ask why they leave him behind when he saw the flower. Cool, he said with stars in his eyes. Nay, nay where did you get the flower? asked Konohamaru. Um, Naruto made it for me, Narumi admitted. A small blush was seen on her cheeks. He lickers her, 
teased Happy with a roll of tongue. Boss likes pretty blondes? An innocent Konohamaru asked. Come here you little brat! Yelled Naruto. Seeing danger ahead Konohamaru screamed like a girl and started to run. You should be running Happy, explained Narumi behind Happy with a smile on her face. No! Trembled Happy before flying out of her reach, he paled when he saw plastic shurikens coming his way. Time passed and night came. The small gang was lying on the grass looking upon the beautiful stars. Konohamaru, why do you want to beat the old man? asked Naruto. Nobody looks at me as Konohamaru, only as young master or the grandson of the Hokage. He explained. That's why I will become Hokage and then everybody has to acknowledge me. Don't worry Konohamaru, I will be your friend, Narumi consoled, who was beginning to see Konohamaru like a little brother, he was like a chibi Naruto. Ha, don't make me laugh, he said, getting the attentions of the others. He stood up and pointed at him. You think a kid will become a Hokage, get real. The Hokages are the most powerful shinobis that Konoha have, Naruto explained. What, asked a gaping Konohamaru, you want to be Konohamaru of the hidden leaves, then fight for it. He grinned. The path you are is childish, it makes me laugh. Let people know you not like the brat who wants to beat his grandfather, but as Konohamaru the man who is the best comrade in all fire country, the man who has the power to defend his friends. With that said he grabs the sleeping happy and began walking home. Narumi shakes her head. Naruto had a way with words, he almost looks like a Hokage with his speech. She giggles at the thought of Naruto being Hokage and declaring the ramen day. Come on Kono it's late let's go home, with that said both went to their respective homes. Narumi saw her home, coming closer to the door, she enters the house, I am home, she said. A woman looks from the kitchen and saw Narumi. The woman narrows her eyes at the time she came in. Where were you young lady? asked a stern Yugo. Um, with Naruto, replied with a small voice, lowering her head trying to hide her small blush. Oh, that's why there is a flaming flower in your head, grins, my little sister is growing so fast, what's next I will have nieces in. Nephews, teased Yugo, before laughing at the steam coming out of Narumi ears. It's not funny, yelled Narumi only to show her red face. I'm sorry Ms. Dragnil. One thing you should know about Yugo is that she likes to tease her friends, more when it's her little sister. Wah! Narumi whined before running to her room. Ha 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 ha. When she saw Narumi out of her sight, she chuckles before calming down. That flower was made by Naruto whose record says he is a dead last but to be able to make fire manipulation and not disappear when he wasn't being near his chakra was impressing. She chuckles at the thought of the headache Naruto will make in the future with his antics. Team 7 A New Morning began in Konoha. We could see civilians walking to their jobs. Shinobis went to the Hokage Tower for new orders. But today, the graduation class will be assigned to a team. They were ready to begin the shinobi lifestyle. Come on Happy. We're late, yelled Naruto as he ran to the academy. His friend Happy was flying at his side. Both slept in and now they were running through the village trying to make it on time. The classroom. The room was filled with excited students who started their shinobi career. Talking about what types of mission they will have and who will be their teammates, obviously the boys wanted the prettiest girl in their team while the girls were content with having a familiar face and some wanted to have their secret crush Sasuke Uchiha. Suddenly, the rivals Ino and Sakura came into the classroom. Ha! Huh, I win again. Sakura said Ino who was out of breath. What are you talking about? My foot entered the class before yours, Sakura declared. Are you blind? While both rivals were chatting about life. Sitting next to the window Narumi sighs at the supposed Kunoichi. They are her friends but even she could see the shame they bring to the name Kunoichi. Knock knock Narumi looked for sound of knocking, when she saw Naruto and Happy waving at her outside the window. With wide eyes she panicked. By breaking the window and grab him by the scarf, pulling him in, she started to shake him. What were you thinking? Wah, let me explain. Then start explaining, she demanded and looked at the flying cat. And you get in here now, Narumi order, not wanting to feel her. Wrath happy enter the room then sat down in the desk eating a fish. We were late, so to make it on time we came through the window, Naruto explained his great idea. 
A tick mark appears on Narumi's forehead, she started choking him making his face turn blue. Not far away from them. Sasuke Uchiha was sweating bullets. Why? There is a horde of fangirls fighting for the place next to him. I saw him first, ha. Huh? Do you think Sasuke kun will even look at you? Look who's talking, fat ass. Sasuke sighs. It was the same every day. He hoped that his team were competent enough and they didn't get in his way. Looking at the class, he sighs again, knowing everybody in here were idiots. Hokage office. So that's the famous rookie of the year, Sasuke Uchiha, said a random Jonin. The office was full of Jonin who were being assigned to a team. The Hokage uses the crystal ball to show them their future students. One of the Jonin was a silver spiky haired man with a gray eye and his forehead protector over his other eye. His face is covered with a mask that covers the lower half of his face. He wore the standard infantry clothing. His name is Kakashi Hitaki. Kakashi saw his students' antics. They looked just like Minato Sensei and Kashina when they were little, only with reverse colors. He mused himself. Staring at his team foldiers, he chuckles when he saw Naruto photo. He watched said Genin and saw that he wore a gray jacket with black cargo pants and his scale patterned scarf. His future female student wore an orange and blue jacket with a white collar, a white swirl with a tassel on the left side, and a red Uzumaki crest on the back. She also wore an orange mini short and her hair was in two pigtails on top of her head. Sigh, as usual, Naruto's being the center of trouble, said Hiruzen who saw his adopted grandson being choked to death. Never scare me again. Do you hear me? yelled Narumi while she let him go. Naruto sighs in relief and was about to speak when his jaw dropped to the floor, he didn't have time to see her with all the choking but now that he had time, a small blush appeared on Naruto's cheeks. Your clothes are awesome. He blurted out the first thing in his mind. Narumi raised an eyebrow. Thanks, you don, she replied not seeing the big deal that Naruto made out to be. He licks her, happy teased before Naruto stuffed his mouth with fish. Aruka entered the classroom and all the genin took seat. With that the meeting began. Starting today, you are official shinobis, but, Aruka let his words sink to his former students. You are genin meaning the lowest ranking, for that. You all will be in a group of three, under the care of a Jonin teacher. Now that's out of the way. I will announce the teams. Next, team seven inches the genin who wasn't in any team were eager to be named. Naruto Dragneel, Narumi Uzumaki. When both heard their names in the same team, Naruto let a large grin appear on his face and Narumi made a small cheer, and Sasuke Uchiha. With that said Narumi's small cheer became a look of horror on her face and Naruto's head hit the desk. After Naruto lift his head, he had a red mark in his forehead. What the hell? Why would we be in a team with him? He yelled. Narumi didn't say anything but she agreed with Naruto. Uruka looked up from his papers and sighed. Sasuke graduated with the highest score. Here Uruka narrowed his eyes at Naruto. And you, Naruto, had the worst scores. He explained making the class laugh. This happens because we want to evenly divide the abilities between the groups. Don't get in the way, Dobi. Sasuke said without looking at him. Naruto glare at him and sit down blowing a stream of fire in frustration. From here, I wish the best of luck. With that said Uruka looked at his former students. He really hopes they reach high and he was proud that he teaches them the way of the shinobi. Two hours later, where is he? yelled Naruto blowing a stream of fire, almost burning a part of Sasuke's hair. Hey watch it, said an annoyed Uchiha. What did you say? Burning a part of his hair. Happy stop eating. Narumi tried to stop Happy to eat another fish. She didn't want her little guy to be a glutton. No, said Happy as he was about to eat. Narumi tackled him and began to fight over the fish. Kakashi enters the classroom and what he saw made him sweat drop. Naruto was cursing his teacher while blowing fire. Sasuke was running in circles trying to stop the fire in his hair and Narumi was fighting happy over a fish. Team 7. He asked. Said team became quiet when they heard the question and looked at the person who enters. Narumi was the first to get out of her surprise and nodded. How should I say this? My first impressions of you guys are, I hate you. Meet me on the roof. He said before disappearing in a screen of smoke. They walked up the stairs and saw Kakashi reading an orange book. Well let's get the introduction out the way. 
Shall we? Kakashi asked, closing his book rather loudly to get his student's attention. What do you want to know? said Narumi with a raised eyebrow. Well, your name, likes, dislikes, hobbies and dreams for the future? explained Kakashi as his eye curved up into, you. Why don't you go first sensei? Naruto asked. Me, pointed at himself. I'm Kakashi Hitaki. I have no intention of telling you my likes and dislikes. As for my dream, I have few hobbies. Team 7 sweat drop at his introduction. You go first blondie, he pointed to the only female of the group. My name is Narumi Uzumaki, my lies are ramen, flowers, my family and friend and I dislike arrogant people, bullying and animal abuse. My hobbies are gardening, music and seals. She said before a big smile appears on her face. My dream is to be the first female. Hokage. Her team has different reactions with her declaration. Kakashi I smile while Sasuke just grunt and Naruto gave thumbs up. Kakashi pointed at Sasuke. Your turn duckbit. Hearing this, Sasuke use his trademark Uchiha glare. My name is Sasuke Uchiha. I don't have many likes and have many dislikes. Sasuke intertwined his hands in front of his face. I don't have a dream I have an ambition that is to kill certain man and the revival of the Uchiha clan. The rooftop became quiet only the sound of the wind was heard. Narumi was bit scared with her teammate dream. She always thought that Sasuke was an asshole but a normal guy, with brooding problems. Like I though Kakashi sighs and hopes that he could help him change his path. Next is the little dragon, he said, looking at the exciting redhead. I'm Naruto Dragnil. My likes are ramen, dragons, my dad Igneal, wind, Narumi and happy. I dislike traitors, animal abuse and people who want to harm Narumi. When Narumi heard this she gave a smile. My hobbies are training, music and swimming, he grinned. My dream is to find Igneal and to be the most powerful shinobi. Now, we will have a test to become genin, he I smile. But Kakashi sensei. I thought that we are already genin, asked a confused Narumi. Kakashi let an amused laugh. Well, if I say this, I'm sure you three are going to be surprised. Eh! said Naruto. Kakashi put his hand in front of his face shadowing his face. Out of the 27 graduates, only 9 are going to become genin after this test. Said a serious Hitaki. The other 18 will be sent back to the academy. He looked at Narumi especially, in other. Words. This test is going to be a very hard one with a dropout rate of 66%. Naruto and Narumi were in shock and Sasuke didn't react to what he said. See, you were surprised. Kakashi commented. What, then why is the graduation exam? Yelled Naruto. He suffered to be able to pass that damn exam and now there was another to make a real genin. That exam was to drop out the weak and bring the ones who can possibly become a shinobi. He replied. Now then, meeting over. He turns around to walk and stop when he remembers something. Oh yeah, don't eat breakfast, you're going to throw up if you do, he said before jumping to another building. Next day, the three student of Team 7 were in the training ground 7, it was a small forest with a clearing of grass. Looking around the forest Sasuke conclude that the forest was dense enough to hide. Two hours later and Kakashi had still not arrived at the training ground. Both Narumi and Naruto were sleepy and hungry while Sasuke stood there like a stature. Yo! said Kakashi with an eye smile. Naruto pointed at him. You're late, he yelled. You see, a black cat crossed my path, so, he looked at his student and saw that Naruto growls at him. Sighing, he put a clock in a log. Moving on, let's start the test. He put the alarm to 12 o'clock and drew two small bells from his pockets. Your test! Get one of these bells, those who can't take one, he or she will be tied to that log and I will eat your lunch in front of you, also the one student who failed the test will go back to the academy, he explained as he saw the determination of his team but will they work as a team? Let the bell test begin. With that said, the genin used chakra jump to hide in the forest. Kakashi stood there for a few minutes letting his students time to hide themselves. A basic rule of a ninja is to be able to hide yourself. He sighs and stared at Sasuke and Narumi hiding place. Everyone is hidden nicely. Were the thoughts of the teacher. Fight me, Kakashi sensei, was the shout of Naruto as Kakashi gave him a deadpanned look. 
You were supposed to hide, you know? He asked. Naruto started to run at him and jump back as he saw him drew something out of his pouch. Ninja Tactics Number 1, Taijutsu. I'll teach you that first, Kakashi explained as he got out an orange book. Why are you reading a book, Sensei? Asked Naruto. Don't worry about it, it's the same whatever I read this or not. Naruto fists began to shake in frustration. He doesn't believe I will be a threat or even try to fight me. I will show him. Naruto throws shurikens for a distraction while he used the opportunity to kick him in the face. Kakashi grabs the shurikens with his fingers and duck under his kick. Naruto used the momentum of the kick to do a turn and tried to make a hit. Naruto made the mistake of closing his eyes, he didn't feel his fist connect and open his eyes seeing no one in watch out. He heard a shout. Looking around he saw his sensei. Behind him as he made a tiger seal for a fire jutsu. Hidden village of Konoha's secret taijutsu master art. E.H. were the thoughts of a confused redhead before he felt a horrible pain in his ass. The redhead was propelled to the sky holding his butt. A thousand years of pain. Kakashi yelled as Naruto crashed in the river and began to sink. Damn it, it wasn't supposed to end like this, he thought as he swam to the surface. After he got near the shore, he was in his knees trying to control his breathing when Kakashi said. What's wrong? You won't get any lunch if you don't get any bell, I know, with a small voice he replied. You said you're going to be the strongest shinobi, but your actions say otherwise, he commented as Naruto lowered his head shadowing his face. Ha, huh, you think I don't know that? I know my weakness, I know my own limits. I'm the weakest of my graduation class but you know something? You can't reach high without first being at the bottom. He lifts his head showing his grin and his purple slit eyes. I'll show you and everyone, what a son of Igneal can do. Red flames surrounds his form, ready to destroy everything in its path. The fire traveled to his arms as Naruto charges to Kakashi. Coming near him, Naruto throws a punch, where Kakashi lazy lift his arm. Big mistake, as soon his hand catch his fist. The flames in. Naruto arms launch itself to Kakashi making a big explosion, boom. The explosion causes debris and dust to fly everywhere. Kakashi used the advantage of the dust he tried to sneak upon him, when a flaming fist was an inch from his face. I widened Kakashi leapt backwards trying to make some space. Maybe I can't see or smell you, but I can still hear you Kakashi sensei. Naruto taunted. E, so Naruto is taking me serious. Maybe I should do the same. Thought Kakashi as he closed his book and put it back in his pouch. The screen of dust dissipates and both were facing each other ready to fight upon notice. Both teacher and student spring at each other. Naruto cooked his fist back and throw a barrage of strikes at Kakashi, but he could evade them as minutes pass he concluded that Naruto could keep up with him at chunin speed and he jumped back and began making hand seals. Suit. Karyu no Kenkaku, Fire Dragon Sword Horn, Naruto was engulf in flames and propel himself at Kakashi as he saw Naruto didn't make any hand seals to make that attack. Even when I was making the hand seals at Chunin speed he didn't need to make hand seals for a fire jutsu, impressing, thought Kakashi. The flaming body of Naruto was getting near when at the last second Kakashi moved a step to the left. Naruto was sent flying to various trees as he began to scream all the way before a big explosion was seen in the distance. Kakashi sweat drop at the destruction and walked to his other student hiding place. Narumi was prepared for her fight with Kakashi as she was in the center of a forest clearing. She took a big breath to calm her nerves and for the fight ahead. Kakashi appear in the clearing and walked slowly until was in front of her. Oh Narumi, what a surprise to see you here, said a sarcastic Kakashi. Narumi gave a smile before drew a kanai and cut a wire near her. Kakashi felt the floor tremble a bit and leapt backwards, he looked down and saw a pit of spikes. Meanwhile Narumi took a scroll from her pouch and opened it, the smoke obscured the item that was released, after a few seconds a katana was seen as she enter a stance her sister Yugo teach her. Kakashi looked carefully his student waiting for any movement, a few seconds pass before Narumi charges at him, she aimed for the legs because as long as he was faster than her, it was going to be impossible to beat him. So it's better if she restricts his movements but Kakashi already knew where the sword was heading and jump. Using the momentum of the jump he kicks at Narumi which she duck under and drew a kanai from her sleeve trying to stab him. 
Kakashi grabbed her wrist stopping the kanai and touch the ground. Both were. Looking at each other, Narumi tried to overpower him with strength but we know who was the stronger of the two. The two shinobis leapt backwards making some space between them. Narumi and Kakashi began making hand seals as fast as possible. Futon. Daitopa no jutsu, great breakthrough, she yelled as she blew a blast of wind. Doden. Doryuheki no jutsu, mud wall. Shout Kakashi when he put his hands on the ground and a wall made by sculptures of dogs appears in front of him. Narumi carefully watches the wall, she didn't want her sensei escape from her sight, if he exit that wall she will know but suddenly everything became dark. Kakashi sighs, she didn't saw him jumping over the wall, she concentrated too much on both sides of the wall that she let her guard down, looking around he heard various explosions far away, maybe Naruto was looking for him, making him sweat drop. Kakashi decided to find his last student to see if he had the same abilities that his teammates had. He never saw the explosions getting near. Sasuke follows his sensei for a few minutes waiting to lower his guard, when he saw the opportunity he throws shuriken and kanai at him, he didn't expect his weapons connecting with him, he gasped when he saw his, dead, teacher but when the body hit the ground it was replaced by a log with weapons on it. Sasuke curses knowing that he gave away his location and run to escape from the depredator, where do you think you are going? He heard when Kakashi appear in front of him, Sasuke didn't stop running and throw a kick, Kakashi lift his hand and this time didn't explode when he stopped the attack from his student. Good weather isn't it? He eye smiled talking like they weren't fighting. Sasuke gave a smirk before flaring his chakra activating the tramp. A lot of weapons were thrown at him while. Sasuke used his leg to kick him and get away from him. Im, he tried to make me believe that he was escaping but in reality he was leading to his tramp. Interesting, thought Kakashi. Sasuke didn't wait for the tramp to work, he made hand seals for a fire jutsu. Kaden. Kakashi was surprised it was now two of his students that can make difficult jutsus and the other didn't need to make any hand. Seals this team became very interesting. Gokaku no jutsu, great fireball, a big was heading to his way. Sasuke couldn't see if his attack reaches him because a huge explosion of fire and weapons obscure his sight. When the smoke dissipates from the explosion there was no sight of his sensei. Taking a deep breath, he didn't saw a hand holding his ankle and drag him to the ground. Doden. Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu, Double Suicide Decapitation. Kakashi left his hiding place in the trees and dispel his shadow clone. How is it? Can't move, right? He said before shurikens were thrown at him. Kakashi lift his hand and grab them. From the forest Narumi and Naruto appear both were grinning. Finally you stop running away sensei, Naruto yelled. Um, no. Don't be afraid to admit you were scared of me, he taunted. Kakashi was going to reply when he felt an attack, turning around he saw Narumi coming closer with her katana. Narumi sneak upon me and attack while Naruto distract me, clever, though Kakashi. You know it won't woe, he didn't finish when he felt heat in his back, turning around again he saw Naruto fist ready to punch him to oblivion. I widened Kakashi jump over them and kicked at their heads making them fly while he though. Another distraction, if. Narumi attack didn't work Naruto would attack me while I block. Good plan guys but you failed. Kakashi said when he heard the alarm of the clock. But Naruto and Narumi even with pain in their heads kept grinning. Kakashi sensei. Naruto began. You forgot, Narumi continued, our last teammate. Happy. Both yelled as Happy came flying at high speed. Kakashi didn't see it coming and that cost him and Happy grabs the bells. I sir. Happy gave both bells to Narumi and Naruto who having the bells in their hands they. Um, I can accept that, Kakashi said. Well Sasuke it seems you are going to the Acid. Nope. Naruto interputed. We needed him, thanks to him we had time to make a plan to beat you. Narumi smiling nods her head in agreement. Um, then you guys, Kakashi I smile, you pass. After they heard those words Naruto lift Narumi of the ground and he twirled her around shouting. We did it, while Narumi hug him. Sasuke with happy in his head still being in the hole on the ground move his head to side to side in sign of victory. Narumi was walking home looking at the official photo of Team 7. In the picture Narumi was looking at the camera with a peace sign, 
Sasuke looked the other way of the camera but you could see a small smirk, eye smiling Kakashi put his hands on top of his student heads. Naruto was trying to make his eyes curved up into, use like his sensei while he used his scarf like a face mask and happy was in. Kakashi hair eating fish. Team 7 report, said Kakashi. Team 7 had completed a total of 20 missions since they passed the bell test. Now the team was ordered to rescue a VIP and Kakashi hasn't heard anything of his students. Concern he was going to speak again when he heard over the radio. Oh god. We need a medic, was the desperate shout of Sasuke. Muajajajaja. Then there was a huge explosion in the distance. Sweat dropping Kakashi couldn't imagine what's going on over there. He sighs and walked to the battlefield, coming near Hitaki saw. Sauke leaning over a tree, his face was pale with a lot of scratches when Sasuke noticed him, he said in a low whisper. It's too powerful. Run you fool, with that said he, pass out. He sweat drop again, his students were drama queens. He grabs and hold him like a sack of potatoes. He remembers when they had to clean a house, it wasn't pretty, they thought the house was haunted and Naruto tried to burn everything to the ground. He sighs, it seems sighing was becoming a thing for him after he was named teacher of this team. Naruto, plan, kick his ass, said Narumi with scratches on her face. Naruto nod his head in understanding, both of them created a list of plans that nobody could understand, if his memory was correct this plan was about, kicking his ass. The fugitive seeing his persecutors ready to use again those flames of destruction, he run at full speed the opposite direction. Don't run away coward was the shout but he didn't mind to be called coward it was better than returning to her. Both members of team 7 gave chase. They watched as the fugitive was gaining a lead, Naruto used his flames to propel himself and cooked his fist ready to smash the criminal scum. Kakashi was heading to his student's direction after finding happy tied in a tree. How was it possible? He didn't know, weirdness was his team. He saw a cat running at him and climbed to his shoulder. He raised in a brow in confusion, he didn't saw the flaming fist coming his way. Mission success Hokage-sama, said Kakshi with a huge lump over his head. Hiruzen looked at the condition of the team and sighs, it seems everybody who knew of the team did sigh a lot. Bring Lady Shijimi to the office, order the Hokage. The door of the office open and a woman enter, the first thing she did was to grab the cat and hug him with all its worth. Oh. My cute Tora-chan said a corpulent woman with dark brown hair that she keeps in three separate poofs. She wears pink lipstick, pick male polish and purple eyeshadow. The poor cat could do nothing more than cry anime tears. I was so worried about you. Meanwhile team 7 enjoy the view of the cat suffering. Lady Shijimi turns her attention from her cat to the team in front of her. I must thank you for saving my little Tora-chan, she began. But may I ask for your names? She asked. Seeing no problem telling their names, they said. Kakashi Hitaki, Sasuke Uchiha, Narumi Uzumaki, Naruto Dragnu. After he said that, Lady Shijimi gasps and her eyes were wide in disbelief. Naruto, she whispers. That can't be possible after he. Shaking her head, I thank you for your time looking for my little Tora Chan. If you ever have any problem, don't be afraid to ask, she said before walking away in a hurry. That was strange, Naruto commented as he scratches his head, Narumi and Sasuke nod their heads in agreement. Kakashi and Hiruzen narrowed their eyes at the suspicious event maybe she knew something of Naruto. Cough, now then, Kakashi's seventh unit's next mission is, babysitting, painting a house or yo. No, I refuse. Was the shout of Naruto. The Hokage and John inside they already expected his outburst. Baka. Have some respect for the Hokage, Uruka yelled. But Uruka sensei, why we have to do stupid mission? Naruto replied, crossing his arms and pouts like a child. It seems you don't remember my teaching about ranking mission. Uruka began, was ready to make another lesson. There are five types of mission S, A, B, C, D. They are distributed by the RAN, he said with passion in his voice. Team 7 must be listening and taking notes. Happy their sensei would gladly teach them again. I had miso ramen yesterday, should I eat pork or fish ramen today? Asked Naruto turning his back at Uruka. A tick mark appears on Uruka's forehead while the old Hokage chuckled at the scene. You want a harder mission, so be it, Serutobi started with a smirk. I will allow you take on a C-ranked mission, it's to escort a certain. 
person. Team 7 couldn't control their grins when they heard that. Kakashi knew he had more work and that means less reading time, he let a small whimper. I'll introduce him now, the Hokage said in order to let him in. A gray-haired man enters the office, he had a large beard and dark eyes. What? They're all kids, was the first thing he said as he entered. He took a big drink of his alcohol bottle and pointed at Sasuke. Kid you have a duck on your hair, then he looked at Naruto for a few seconds. Why did you dye your hair pink? He asked with confusion in his voice. Narumi couldn't control her giggles while Sasuke's eyebrow twitched. Let me go, I'll teach him a lesson. The redheaded yelled, trying to escape the grip of Kakashi who grabbed him as soon he saw his student running at their client. I am the bridge building expert Tazuna. Once I have returned to my country, I will have you protecting me while I complete the bridge, the now named Tazuna explained. Team and were getting ready for the mission checking they had enough food, weapons and medicine for the journey ahead. Naruto was exciting. It was a long time since he was outside the village, he looked around trying to remember everything he saw. From his position he could see the forest ahead and saw animals. Living their normal lives, a family of wolves were not too far away from them, birds would chirp from time to time, shinobis and civilian alike walking in and out of the gates. Naruto took a deep breath and walked with a confident smile. Team 7 from here. Stay alert, always have a teammate close. Flare your chakra if you feel suspicious about something never wonder alone and above everything else. Always have a weapon at hand even in your sleep. Kakashi lectured his students, his voice and body language screaming seriousness. Kakashi will not lose a student on his watch more when he started to get attached with his little students. Team 7 nod their head in understanding while Naruto kept his grin. They walked for several hours with nothing to do. It was quiet only the sound of drinking from Tazuna could be heard. It's better cooked, no, it's better raw, you don't need to fight for a fish, right? We are friends here. HN, was the conversation of Team 7 fighting for a fish while Narumi tried to calm them down and Sasuke didn't care if the fish was better raw or cooked but he will eat cooked fish. Are they always like that? asked a heavenly drunk Tazuna looking at the scene in front of him. Kakashi eyes smiled at the scene even though they caused a lot of trouble and gave him a headache, his team made things interesting. You get used to it, he said. Hmm, tell me Kakashi, right? He guesses, Ponce. You think your team is ready for this mission? He was feeling guilty, if this kids get killed it would be his fault for lying about the mission. I think they are not ready, but I must have faith in them. I just hope this mission goes smoothly, he said. Kakashi looks ahead and saw a puddle, sighing in resignation he kept walking. Team 7 was walking without care in the world. They forgot to always be alert but that should be expected from a team made of new genins. Suddenly the puddle disappears and two rogue shinobis of Mizugakure appear. Both ninjas had large metal gauntlets with poison in their claws. They used their surprise as an advantage and wrapped Kakashi in a shuriken-style chain. One down, said the one with spiky brown hair, as they tore the janin to shreds. After they killed him they went for the easy prey. Naruto froze when he saw his sensei being destroyed to pieces. Wide-eyed he didn't notice the Mizu brothers coming at him with their poison razor claws. Clack Sasuke intercepted their attack with two kanais in his hands. Narumi getting out of her surprise made a shadow clone to protect Tazuna while she fights. Sasuke was getting overpowered by the two experienced chunin, when Narumi jumped over his shoulder and kicked them in the face making some space between them. HN, you go for the right. Order Sasuke looking at his opponents. Who put you in charge? She teased trying to ease the heavy tension. The demon brothers recover from the hit and release the chain keeping them together, they could not afford to been trapped by the chain. The spiky brown haired man named Maizu used chakra dash at them making the distance they had disappeared in a second. Sasuke ducked under his punch and tried to stab. Seeing his opponent Kanai, Maizu lift his leg making Sasuke arm unavailable to stab him. Narumi used the opportunity of her teammate distraction and throw a kanai at him. Both members of Team 7 jump back. Maizu saw his retreading opponents and he evade the kanai thrown at him ready to use again chakra dash. He eye widened when he saw in slow motion the kanai and saw a paper bomb on it. Boom Maizu was sent flying backwards where he stays unconscious in the ground. Both genins gave a sigh in relief knowing their battle end. You got distracted brats. 
said a voice behind them. Surprised they saw the last enemy, being caught up with the fight they forget about him. Before the last rouge could kill them Leafs began to dance with the wind and Kakashi appear behind him putting him in a headlock. Yo! said Kakashi with a bored voice. Kakashi sensei! exclaimed Narumi in relief. What a show off! thought Sasuke. Naruto, sorry for not being out right away, he said looking at his frozen student. I didn't think you wouldn't able to move. He walked towards Sasuke and Narumi. Anyway, Sasuke, good job. He praised, Narumi, you too. I, I, couldn't do anything, but Sasuke and Narumi were able to in their first real fight. Thought Naruto staring at his shaking hands. How could they can't be afraid when someone's is murder in front of you and is ready to kill you next? He gritted his teeth and watched the sky. Naruto, said happy with concern in his voice. Are you hurt, cat? Sasuke teased his teammate when he saw his hands shaking. Sasuke. Several hours, after talking with Tazuna about his assassins, he told them the truth about his country and need of help. Team 7 agreed to help him with their own agendas for agreeing. Sasuke wanted to fight stronger enemies, Narumi just wanted to help him while Naruto with a bit of insecurity he agreed. Naruto, do you want some fish? Happy offered trying to cheer his friend who was a bit pale and was very quiet, his team would look at his way from time to time. No thanks Happy. Observing the mist ahead, he smells some flowers with oil. His musing was cut short when the sound of a sword breaking through the wind was heard. Get down, now. Kakashi saw a massive broadsword pass by their heads and got nailed in a tree. Oh, my, my, you are Zabuza Momochi, the exiled ninja of the Mizugakure. Kakshi said not concerned about the A-ranked rogue shinobi that was in front of him. So you're Kakashi no Sharingan. Give me the old man and I will spare your lives. Threaten the rogue ninja named Zabuza who appear in the handle of the sword. Sorry can't do, he replied as he grabbed his forehead protector and lift it showing his cover eye. I am honored that copycat Kakashi would see me as threat to use the Sharingan. Zabuza disappear with his broadswords as a dense fog appear making it difficult to see. But you are already late, a voice said behind Tazuna who froze and began to shake, the genin were not prepared for his sudden appearance and couldn't stop him, when Kakashi used chakra dash to be able to reach his team. Sorry, you're not that fast to escape the sight of the Sharingan, he said stabbing Zabuza while his red eye with three tomo spins slowly. You're finished, Zabuza laughed before his body dissolved. Into water. A water clone. Kakashi looked around trying to find his enemy while the mist became thicker. Team 7 lost sight of their sensei but they could hear the sounds of battle and took formation around Tazuna. Suddenly, the ground began to shake, birds flew away like they were running from something and the mist just didn't dissipate. What is that? Sasuke said as Kakashi appear near him exhausted but he kept his guard. Thinking how this could get from bad to worse, it seems we have company coming. Grab Tazuna and run to any village nearby. He said hearing the battle cry and footsteps of a group of bandits and if his senses were telling the truth there was some missing nin in that group. The ground stated to shake more violently telling something was coming near. Out of the forest bandits with knives and swords were taking the opportunity to kill two ninjas with the most bounty on their heads, thinking that numbers and the element of surprise will be enough to success. Narumi and Sasuke were trying to hide their fear. Even though that shinobis were better than a simple civilian or bandit it didn't mean they couldn't be killed or be overpowered with numbers, they had the right to be afraid of the intimidated group. Well, well, look here boys. He have two preys in our menu, kill the ninjas and capture the kids they should be useful, said the leader of the bandits. Narumi make as many clones you can. Sasuke you're with me. Kakshi order while the bandits were fighting with Zabuza who had a bored look in his face. Naruto you. He stops himself saying any more when he saw his student emotionless face, it seems he was still afraid but he thought Naruto will be the first to start a fight, to jump into the fight. Protect Tazuna, he said. While Team 7 kept fighting the ground stopped shaking before a roar was heard. The battlefield became quiet, nobody move a muscle, waiting for the cause of the roar to show itself. What they saw was a big beast with three red eyes, with humanoid body. On the other end, there was root like cutouts. Some of the less rave bandits run away knowing they had annoyed a demon. Kakashi seeing one of the demons created by the Shinigami. Air himself, he didn't wait to shout. Cover your ears now, 
Team 7 and Zabuza covered their ears before a sound was heard. Naruto couldn't hear anything but his heartbeat. He saw how bodies began to drop. The bandits who were running away dropped like flies. After a moment Kakashi and Zabuza started to fight again while Team 7 tried to comprehend what's happening. Lullaby is a real demon whose power is to kill anybody that hears his voice. He was made by the last mage. Knows as Zerif the most wanted man of the elemental nations, said to be the Shinigami son. Kakashi explained while he kept fighting Zabuza who smirked in amusement. Really Kakashi, teaching about demons right now when you should have told them before coming here, Zabuza laughed. The beast knows as lullaby was getting closer and time stopped moving. Naruto began thinking, since the moment they were out of the safety for Konoha, danger was ever evil can attack with the intent to kill. Why? Why shinobis could care less for the lives they took? Why? What the fuck it's this world we live in? Naruto didn't notice flames were burning the grass and trees nearby, he didn't know what to do. Could he be a shinobi who can kill and forget about it? Would he kill innocent because it was order? No. Naruto thought with fire in his eyes, he was Naruto Dragneel not an assassin or a monster, he was the protector of the weak and innocents, he would stop this cycle of thinking. A new motivation. Was born that day but would be enough for change things or would be forgotten like any other shinobi's dreams who died trying to change this world. A huge tornado of flames surrounds Naruto. That's right every time I'm afraid or insecure, my flames will always be there, my light in the darkness, it's mine flames who will illuminate this dark world. Naruto thought. Hey stupid tree, let's fight. Naruto shouted with the biggest grin he had. After that he didn't wait for a response when he springs towards the demon ignoring the shouts to stop from his team and sensei. Coming closer he thrust his arm making a fireball that hits the demon. Lullaby looked down seeing who it was slowly his face had a grin forming. Naruto made a big jump and cooked his fist, coming closer he didn't have time to move when a hand was upon him. Grab Lullaby throw him to the ground making the earth shake and debris to fly around. After a few seconds a rocket came out of the crater made, Naruto punched Lullaby in the jaw making him stumble backwards. Don't underestimate me, Naruto shouted in the air, looking down he saw the demon open his mouth and a beam forming, Naruto grin at. The challenge his body caught fire and prepare his attack, Karyu no Kenkaku, he was launched towards the demon while Lullaby fired his beam. Meeting in the middle both attacks clash for dominance trying to overpower the other. Slowly the flames were getting smaller when the flames died out and the beam continued its course. Naruto could only eye widen before the beam reached him. Boom, amusing you are hatchling. I will spare these humans while you get stronger, was the voice of the demon. With that said the beast looked at the group of humans before turning around and walked until the human gets stronger. It's bring a grin remember the fight, he was weak like any other but he had something he didn't believe he would see again after so many years. Magic. That's why he would let him lick's wounds and get more powerful, maybe then he would get a worthy fight and then he would eat him. Naruto was unconscious when he fell into the river soon the tide moves his body, after a few hours his body got near a shore. He was in pain losing consciousness from time to time, his body was not responding, he heard footsteps nearby and an elderly voice talked to him but he could not comprehend his head was shaking, he couldn't take it any longer and pass out afterwards. His last thought was to become stronger and the safety of his team. He lost the battle but there was always a second round. Where am I? Was the first thought when Naruto gained consciousness. Groaning in pain he looked around and saw he was in room an old room trying to move his muscles protest making him wince in pain. My, my it seems my visitor woke up, said an elderly voice near the doorway. Naruto gave a shriek in surprise not expecting a person entering the room he fell of the bed. Hearing chuckles. He stares at the person who was in the doorway. An elderly woman with gray hair. A few wrinkles we in her face more pronounced in her eyes meaning she is a quite happy person. EMM. Hello, was the awkward greeting. What was he supposed to said? Give him a break. Chuckles. You don't have to be tense sweetie, I'm not going to hurt you, she explained as she helped him sit on the bed and started to change his bandages. She was surprised when the wounds and bruises that were from not a few days ago healed. Those wounds should be healed in weeks after all he was with second degree burns. Thank you, Naruto said as a blush appeared in his face embarrassed as he needs help to even move. You are so cute, 
was the declaration before the old woman began pinching his cheeks. Naruto couldn't move so he had to endure to. The slow torture, a torture that all child had to experience in his or her life. Ba Chan let me go, Naruto said with anime tears. After a few minutes, she disappointed stopped pinching his cheeks. Are you feeling better? You were after all in pretty bad shape when I found you? She asked with concern in her voice with good reason. You don't see a child beaten in a shore bleeding to death. I'm fine thanks Ba Chan for taking care of me. He said deducing she was the one taking care of him while he was unconscious scratching the back of his head in a sheepishly manner. He froze. When he didn't felt his scarf on him looking around in desperation to find the only thing to remember by his father. Ba Chan do you know where is my scarf? He asked with hope that she knew where was it. Oh, I took it with your clothes, they had blood on them so I decided to clean it for you. She explained as Naruto looked down at his body and realized in fact he was only in his boxers. Kya. After the embarrassing event, the old lady gave him some spare clothes to wear while his outfit dry off. Naruto looked closely the room he was in and saw that it was a children's room if the toys lying around was any suggestion, the walls were blue but there were some cracks in them, there was so much dust that made the floor. Looked like sand in the dessert. Some alerts rang in his head but he paid no mind, it was not like the old lady would attack him after she save him right? Ba Chan how long was I passed out? He asked dreading for the answer, he didn't want his team to worry about him or worst think he was already dead. M. Four days, she said counting the days when she found him in the shore. What, then can't be, he yelled. He couldn't believe he was out of commission that long. Thinking about it he didn't take that much damage in his fight to be unconscious for four days right? Questions about his team began to enter his mind. Are they safe? Did they escape from lullaby? Where are they? Mm. She mumbled paying more attention to the wall in front of her, she started to whispering and stumble in her place. The majority of people will feel uncomfortable with an old lady talking to a wall but Naruto like usual didn't get the situation he was in. Hey, Ba-chan are you okay? He asked, trying to get her out of her thoughts. Oh, how rude of me to space out like that, she replied shaking her head while Naruto looked puzzled at her. You must be hungry, right? She didn't wait for an answer when she left the room, her footsteps getting weaker. A huge question mark appeared on Naruto's head. He scratched his head in confusion and decided to follow the old lady. Walking the halls of this house, better yet of this huge compound. Naruto saw a lot of photos hanging in the walls, different locations that looked so cool to live there. Maybe I could live there he thought. Looking closely, he couldn't believe the old lady could be that young. In the kitchen the elderly woman had a huge desire to whack someone. She was preparing some soup with a bit of fish and rice as compliment. Looking around for someone nearby and getting confirmation that any kind of life was nearby she used her secret formula for the soup, she didn't believe she was paranoid that someone could steal her secret formula but she won't let anybody have her recipe, it was made by her for her family and she would be dead before giving that up. Ba Chan. Where did you take this photo? Was the shout of the redhead entering the kitchen with a photo in his hand, the old. Woman jump in surprise and stare at the picture he was referring. When she realized what photo he was talking about sadness entered her eyes. M that old photo was made in the anniversary of our marriage, it is in the coast of Fire Nation, netiful in summer and peaceful in winter, you should take some time to visit, kids this days don't appreciate how beautiful is the world around us and don't get me started with your ideas of you. With that the woman lost herself in her speech while a sweat drop grew bigger in Naruto head. EMM, he tried to say something but it seems he was ignored. Then there is your YOLO, what the hell is that? In my days we play hide and seek, now kids want danger and be cool. Naruto sighs having to hear everything she said. Getting bored, he ignored what she was saying and remembered his fight with Dullaby or something. He needed more power and fast if not that demon will go for his team, but how can he get more powerful with so little time it has been 4 days since his battle and he didn't know where his team whereabouts, doubting in himself. What could he do? Where to begin? Could he make it? You know if you don't have the answers to your questions follow your heart. A voice broke him out of desperation looking up, he saw the old lady giving him a small smile that said, I believe in you, the one that mothers give to their children to reassure them they could do anything with hard working. You have fire inside those eyes of yours, she started. When you feel darkness approaching remember who you are, 
Never give up on your dreams even when everybody thinks it's impossible you keep going because it's your dream that made you reach higher than anybody. Always follow your heart when your eyes can't guide to the light. She ruffles his hair and turn around to keep cooking dinner. With new determination he stood up and said, Ba Chan, I'm going to train, he didn't hear the small chuckle. Getting out the house was difficult his body scream at him to stop and rest, every step he made was more heavy knowing what his mind trying to do. He reach a small clearing and begin to gather fire around himself, his aching muscles began to relax and the small bruises disappearing. He felt energized and happy to feel the power his father teaches him. He controlled his flames to move from one point to another, dancing, as the flames follow his movements, imagining an invisible foe in front of him punching, kicking, blocking, rolling. Shinobis are trained killers, if hesitate to kill your target you're worthless shinobi. Number 148 of the shinobi rules. Making a lance of fire he made it hotter in the tip and throw it to a nearby tree, it exploded in contact turning ash the once big tree. Naruto, sorry for not being out right away, I didn't think you wouldn't be able to move. His fist caught on fire becoming hotter and hotter until the fire started getting brighter almost white. Amusing you are hatchling, get stronger or I will kill them. He launched his fist to a nearby rock and like a knife with butter it melts away leaving nothing behind. I have faith in him, after all I'm his teacher, he isn't a delusional brain dead or the Kyubi slave, he is Naruto Dragnel proud shinobi of Konoha and son of Igneel. He inhales making his chest expand at ridiculous levels, steam started to come out of his closing mouth. My dream is to find Igneel and be the most powerful shinobi. He put his hands in front of his mouth in a pose resembling that of a trumpeter. Are you hurt, Mr. Scaredy Cat? Karyu no, kitchen. M, the soup is ready and the rice looks good, I should call him to eat he must be hungry after playing outside. Boom a small tremor shakes the house making the soup fell down the floor. E, I hope he likes my special soup. She started to serve some. Soup, in a small bowl like nothing happened not noticing she was serving nothing to the bowl. She put utensils in the island of the kitchen and went for her guest, he must be hungry she mused herself. Coming closer she saw the small clearing full of life burned down, trees were nothing more than ashes, the small grass was now sand and rocks but she didn't notice or didn't care to the destruction cause. The elderly woman came across a panting Naruto who was in his knees trying to get his breathing under control, small cuts were seen. Naruto looked up and gave a big grin even if he was tired and his aching muscles came back with vengeance. Sup? Kids these days. Next day. Sorry Ba Chan but my team needs me. He said while putting his scarf making his outfit complete once again. He looked at the house making a promise to come back and visit another time but right now his friend need him. Boom boom looking at the sound of the remor he saw lullaby nearby walking towards him letting a big grin he started running at him ready or not he will fight to his last breath. He didn't notice the old lady in the window staring at his back while he started running. What amusing child, was the whispers in the house while the face of the old lady lost life and became pale her eyes disappear becoming orbs of darkness and open her mouth showing an abyss with sharp teeth, before walking to the dark of the room disappearing to never seen again. Wave construction bridge, you're the guy from the woods, Narumi said staring into the eyes who, killed, Sasuke. Her hand was trembling wanting nothing more than kill him. Why do you hesitate, didn't I kill your friend? The boy named Haku said trying to goad her to finish what she started. Why did you kill Sasuke? Why do you work for Zabuza don't you see he's using you? She tried to make sense of the situation, when she met him in the forest he was peaceful and caring, he taught her what true strength was and now here he was working for a monster who was making this nation fell in ruins. I'm Zabuza tool and apprentice. He was the first to saw me as who I am not as what I was. He gave me a purpose to live, feed me, trained me, in all purpose he is like a father to me and now that I was beaten he doesn't need a broken tool. Narumi didn't know what to think, she opened her mouth to say something, so many questions. Without answers. Haku looked back sensing something wrong before his eyes got. Wide and gave a small smile. So I still have some use for Zabuza-sama. With that said he sprang through the mist disappearing from Narumi's sight. Wait! She yelled trying to stop him from whatever he was doing but it fell in deaf ears because he didn't stop running. Boom boom feeling small tremors, she tried to look through the mist only to look a big silhouette slowly walking towards her position. 
Fear got a grip on her feeling the foul aura, she couldn't move her legs, her arms. Were shaking, she tried to shout maybe out of fear or warn about the monster coming their way. Narumi take this, Kakashi appear at her side without questioning her condition, showing some earplugs in his hand, and put it until you can't hear anything, the moment I have the signal both of you start running at the village this is a fight you can't win. Find Sasuke and tell him the same. Kakashi command before he body flicker. Narumi with trembling hands she tried to put her earplugs, when she heard clapping out of the tremors. Well, well look what we have here too bounty enough to live a luxurious life, a weak demon and a cute girl. It seems I got lucky, kill the ninjas and bring the girl. The first to bring her to me can have some fun with her after I'm done with her, a small man with puffy hair. Said, he wears a black suit, his name is Gato the Tyrant of Wave. Hearing their boss command with lecherous grins and a battle cry there started running to the easy money. Remembering what happened four days ago tears started to come out Narumi eyes, feeling hopeless and without the help of Sasuke this time her nightmares will become true before her eyes. That fear makes her paralyzed and making her difficult to think a plan or something in general. Before they could reach her a hand pulverized more than half of the bandits and the strength of the hand made the other half go lying to every direction. Stop shouting you stupid insects. Now look what you did my hand is dirty with your filthy blood lowlifes. Was the demonic voice of lullaby looking bored. He was tired of waiting for the last mage to appear. Me of the humans here, he will come like a pathetic hero. Kakashi and Zabuza regroup with Tazuna who at first got scared seeing the demon of the mist but then he was explained that Kakashi and Zabuza made a truce while lullaby was here they had more chances of survival and run at Narumi and Sasuke location. Narumi are you okay? Kakashi asked with concern watching dried tears on her face. Why yeah I'm fine. She replied trying to sound confident but only came out as stuttering. Kakashi put his hand on her shoulder trying to calm her down. Narumi threw herself to him crying. He could only hug her back and tell her everything is going to be fine. While Team 7 was regrouping Lullaby was toying with the bandits using his vines as strings and controlling their movements making them kill each other for the amusement of a demo zero n. Suddenly a comet was descending towards the bridge, it didn't take long to crash between team 7 and the massacre that lullaby was making. The crash was so strong that wind pick up and made the whole mist in the bridge disappear making everything visible, everybody. Including lullaby waited for the mysterious person to peer out of the dust made by the crash. Don't fear because Naruto Dragneel is here, Naruto with a big grin came out of the crater he made. He looked around and saw a lot of corpses with vines embedded in them. He grimaced turning around he saw his team and frown looking at Narumi condition. His only conclusion was that it was lullaby fault. Finally hatchling, I was getting bored out here, the demon said. I was going to eat those behind you if you didn't get in time. He sighs. As you can see I'm a busy demon. Sorry but I don't have time to chat, he replied as fire exploded around him. Cracks began to appear in his feet, debris and dust went flying everywhere. He took a step forwards before running at Lullaby ignoring the shout of Kakashi to stop. Yes. Yes. Come at me with everything you got hatchling, Lullaby yelled before he lifts his hands ready to smash him. Naruto running was leaving a trail of fire, coming closer he waited for Lullaby to attack, he didn't wait long before the tried to smash him. The bridge shake with the strength of the attack. Lullaby tried to see if he got him but the dust didn't let him, a fireball came out between his hands, crashing to his face. You have to better if you want to kill me, was the shout of Naruto coming out of the dust and took the opportunity of the fireball to make a solid punch to its face again. The power behind the fist made Lullaby take steps backwards. Ugh, good punch but if that is only what you got, then I'm disappointed, the creation of the black mage said. He launched a small beam at high speed only for Naruto to kick it away. Wide-eyed lullaby launched several small beams at him. You're not that powerful, my fear and insecurity made you looked. Invincible. My own fear holds me back but no more I'll show you my power lullaby. Naruto yelled as the small beams came at him Beofer his body was engulfed in flames making the beams dissipate in contact. Flames became hotter and propel himself down. The demon full of himself didn't fear for the attack and tried to punch him to oblivion. The bullet of fire came crashing at his hand melting all it touches and keeping his trajectory destroying all his arm. R. Was the shout of pain of lullaby grabbing where it last was seen his arm. I told you, 
A voice behind him said softly, looking back lullaby for the first time after his lord he feared a human. Staring at the flames a black silhouette was between the chaos only his glowing eyes could be seen, the eyes of a monster. Taking steps back lullaby desperate inhale before he let a thousands of fireball came out of his mouth. Naruto looked bored at the fire coming his way. Wrong move, he said opening his mouth he let the flames come closer to him before the fire around began gathering around his mouth. Naruto inhale all of the fire, chewing he felt energized and more powerful. Flashback. Bachan you know this bowl has nothing right? Said a sweat dropping Naruto staring at his bowl. It seems rats like my soup, she said looking also at her empty bowl. Now that I think about it Bachan, you never told me your name or where are your husband and child? He asked trying to make some talk. Mm you're right. My name is Atsuko and for my husband and child they're dead many years ago said with sadness in her voice. Ah, oh, I'm sorry I didn't want to bring bad memories, he tried to apologize but only for his curiosity to increase. Why did Ba Chan was here alone? Why buying a dog or something to keep her company? Chuckles, don't worry sweetie, that was many years back now that I think about it my husband was a shinobi, she said remembering the old days, where her family was still alive. Sugoi, Ba Chan did Oji Chan was badass like me? He asked with curiosity in his voice. Ha ha ha. Yes, he was very badass, but was different from the others, she explained. Ha. Huh? What do you mean, Itsuko Ba? He asked with a question mark in his head. Well, he didn't like to kill. I'm proud to say that my husband, in all his career as shinobi, he didn't kill anybody, she said with a big smile on her face. Even when everybody called him a weakling because he couldn't take a life, something why I fell in love with him, she continued. Naruto eyes couldn't get any bigger, hearing that somebody had the same motivation as him to not kill anybody, it brings him hope that he could do it also. Ba Chan, I want to be like him, he said convinced from having a new idol to follow. No, was the shout of Itsuko, her hands started to shake. Naruto hearing this jump in surprise not expecting that reaction. I'm proud of my husband but even then he had to make some very bad decision, stealing, beating as some of the things my husband have to do. Shinobis are not heroes, she said with anger in her voice. Naruto looked at the floor, he was saddened to hear his one of his first dream was to be a hero and what better way to become hero than been a shinobi. Heroes are those who help everybody no matter the situation, he doesn't need to steal, to kill, to cheat. Heroes have the most difficult path than everybody's else because he must think for everybody, every single one life he cherishes and the sad thing is heroes doesn't exist anymore. She exploded with anger and loathing at the world. She grew up hearing stories and fairy tale about how a hero is, but the sad thing is there isn't such thing as that. Then I'm going to become one, yelled Naruto, standing up from the chair. Naruto, you have better chance being cage than being a hero, she said without emotion. It was noble of him, but millions said the same and were killed early. So be it. Even if everybody thinks it's impossible, I will keep going. Even if my mind and body tell me otherwise, I will become a hero, he said while his eyes started to glow. My dream was to become the most powerful shinobi there is, but now my dream is to become a hero. I will become more powerful than any shinobi so I don't need to kill. With conviction he looked at her eyes with any doubt in his eyes full power, a power wanting to be unleashed to the world. Atsuko stare at the boy. No at the young man in front of her, full of confidence, ready for the world to give him the best shot it has, ready for the dark side of humanity to attack. Ha 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 ha, I see so you have already made up your mind, then I hope best wishes Naruto future hero of Konoha, she said as a tear fell out of her eye. Flashback end. Let me teach how is it done. He yelled making his chest expand and fire to appear around him. Bandits and shinobis looked at the image inside the flames. A red dragon was seen before opening its eyes showing glowing eyes full of power, the dragon opened his mouth ready to unleash chaos at his enemy. Karyu no Hoko, fire dragon's roar, he yelled unleashing a stream of fire, everything in its path was destroyed or burned leaving nothing behind. Lullaby widened could only open his mouth in fear as the fire angle fate. Naruto stare ahead nothing more that burned ground was left behind, he sighs and turned around his yellow glowing eyes looked at the rest of the bandits. Anybody else wants to fight? He asked as soon his words come out all bandits run away some throwing themselves to the ocean. 
His ears caught a battle cry and heavy footsteps looking at the origin of the sound, he saw a group of civilians with a kid in the front. Happy was there with a red bandana and a camouflage jumpsuit, after shouting their freedom rights and whatnot, they soon quieted down looking around in confusion seeing nobody to fight. Naruto! yelled Happy while he flies and crashed at him hugging him and letting some tears in happiness. Happy! Naruto shouted back smiling seeing his best friend. Sasuke you're alive! was the shout nearby, both looked at the person who shouted and saw something that threw out of loop. Naruto! There was Narumi hugging Sasuke for dear life, the same Sasuke she hated with passion. He felt a small pang in his heart. Watching the event in front of him and didn't wait to let his confusion known. What the fuck is going on here? After the great battle on the bridge, and the small civil war that lasted less than five minutes, the tyrant midget known as Gato was squashed by Lullaby at the beginning of his appearance. And with his death, the suffering and despair that clouded the land of waves were no more, for in a way Lullaby was the real hero who liberates the land unintentionally. The battle of the bridge opened the eyes of many people as they saw their freedom in front of them, they saw an eight-year-old boy lead a revolution, they saw a boy no older than thirteen killing a demon that was supposed to be immortal, and unable to be sealed or beaten by humanity. With all of this, the land of waves could do one thing after that, celebrating. All night the sky would be illuminated with fireworks and lights that lifted years and decades of sadness and oppression. Beers were raised, laughter was heard, and smiles were present in that night. Even the land was celebrating with them as the soft sounds of waves were heard in the clear sky with no sight of mist everywhere, making the fireworks proved a perfect complement to the stars that shine with happiness and purity. At the beach our young demon slayer looked up the stars and reflected his life so far, with so little time to think in battle after battle, he appreciated this small time to himself knowing this was the beginning of a bigger journey. The road ahead looked grim, but he was excited nonetheless. Bring it on. With a fist raised, he challenged anybody to try stopping him. Yeesh, stop being dramatic! exclaimed Narumi with a sweat drop. Her sandals were in her hand as she walked barefooted feeling the cold sand that only the beach could provide. You disappeared more than five days and now you have this look that says I'm constipated, his responses was pouting at her teasing and said nothing in return. She let her smile drop a bit in size before sitting down and stare at the relaxing waves that hit the shore in a soothing way. No sound was made between them, no word came out of their mouths as they looked upon the infinite ocean, for both of them had no words for each other. Naruto was prepared for the questioning he will get and the concern of his team, but none of that occurred when he appeared, he was greeted like nothing was wrong, he won't lie and say that didn't hurt a little and even then a dark thought took possession of his heart for a second. Did they care I was gone for so long, Narumi took a glance at her friend, best friend, and saw his frowning face. She was worried, she felt the despair as he was drowned in the strong turrets of the river, and she felt the loneliness that with his absence and the obsession creeping inside of her as she trained and looked every piece of land to find him. She knew he was alive, but a vivid imagination didn't come to help her in this situation. She didn't know how to approach the subject, she could see the same battle maniac that was her friend, and she could see that mischievous grin when he appeared on the bridge, but a single thought erased all the happiness that came with that sight, a thought that came right after the first fight with Lullaby. Did he hate that she didn't do anything in that battle? Did he hate that she did not look harder for him? That she started questioning his survival? Narumi knows that was a stupid thought and nobody would think like that, but they weren't there. They didn't stay petrified as her best friend was being pulverized by a demon the size of a skyscraper. She still feels the same impotence that stopped her from doing anything, the same weakness that almost cost his life. I was worried. It was whispered, almost lost in the breeze of the night, but instead of being unheard, the ears of the dragon child could still hear it loud and clear. Surprised could be seen on her face as she didn't attempt to say a word, but the guilt that was slowly eating her inside couldn't hold it. Yeah, me too. His grin could illuminate the night, for he was happy to know he was missed. But then I saw you all angry and red at this girl, and then BAAM she went flying like a bird. He was expressing with his hands how far she went and his body language screamed excitement. His voice was lost in the breeze as she kept staring at his royal purple eyes, eyes that are full of life and happiness. She remembers the days that she didn't have Yugo Nei-chan, and it was Naruto and her against the world back then. 
She could remember crying at the whispers the villagers would say behind her back, whispers full of hatred and fear that left her insecure and saddened, before he fires back insults, even fights if the villagers were brave enough. He could be in bruises and be in pain, and he still could smile at her with those eyes without any type of hate or resentment at her. Her lips trembled and her vision became blurry, she felt her throat burn in pain wanting nothing more than cry and let out all of it, and she did. And I was damn bo. Naruto yelps as Narumi came crashing on him, and with no preparation, he felt the soft sand of the beach on his back. He could hear clearly the sobbing of Narumi, and he felt his shirt getting dampened by the minute. The confused redhead couldn't comprehend what was happening, but his arms automatically secured the crying blonde with nothing more than bringing security as much as it can. Why you idiot? Why you almost died and I didn't know if you were safe or not? Her cries were close to drowning her words, but she could manage to spit all her worries and pain that she bottles up for days. I couldn't sleep knowing that you were up there somewhere lost. Her hug became more forceful trying desperately to hold him as if he could disappear again. I didn't know if you hate me for not helping, her voice got lower and lower until it became muffled. I, just, stood there. Watching, she remembered that day over and over again for the last days, thinking about, what if, she was more helpful that day. Hey, he whispered trying to catch her attention, but her fears wouldn't let her see him in the eyes. His eyes would be full of hate or resentment, his face would express disappointment and disgust aimed at her. Hey look at me. His hands grab her face wiping of all tears she let out, and then she saw his face. I'm not good with words, he let a nervous smile appear. But I know we're not supposed to be invincible. There will be times that we can't help but be helpless to the point of feeling weak. You were afraid of a demon, that is fine. I was afraid when human jackasses ambushed us. He smiled hearing her small giggles. Yeah, the thing is the world won't go easy on us. I might not be. Lucky tomorrow that why, he stood up, dust himself of all sand and extended his hands to her. So, what will it be Narumi Uzumaki? Would you help me fight when I can't anymore? Would you stay at my side as we learned from our mistakes we made? His grin shines with the Mumi looked in awe, and wonder where did the hyperactive redhead go? I guess, after all, someone needs to look after your sorry ass. She grabs the inviting hands of Naruto and pulls herself up. Way to ruin the moment Narumi. He deadpanned. MMMPH, be more grateful that I even told you about my problems. She crossed her arms and turned her head away. Are you that Tsunere or something? The fool asked raising his hand to scratch his head in confusion. Immediately her head snaps at his direction, for her face was shadowed by her hair but still see the red dots for eyes and that corrupted smile. What did you say? Her raspy voice came out of hell itself on the point of sulfur coming out of her mouth. The proud but foolish red shinobi lost his composure and let a small squeak escape his lips, and his skin tone rapidly lost its color. He took a step back, but the now labeled, yellow demon, took two steps forward. Naruto could see his broken body and the screams that he would unleash if he stayed one more minute. Naruto. Where are you? The party is awesome. You should see this, he faked a girly voice, and the, demon, laughed at his cute. Attempt to escape. Oh, look at that someone needs me, see ya, he runs without looking back. Come back here, he didn't listen, for he knew someone was closing on him as sweat appeared on his face. Narumi chasing him let a true smile appear on her face knowing that everything will be alright. The beach became quiet after that, and everything looked peaceful until a soft, kai, was heard. Out of a screen of smoke appeared the third and last teammate looking at the pace they stood. Having heard all. His face expressed an emotion of uncertainty, and there was nothing there to help him explain this feeling. You know if you keep making that face, it will be permanent. In a poof of smoke, Kakashi appeared reading his favorite book. Both shinobi stood there in silence while the beach was happy to let them have some peace. You knew she had insomnia? Sasuke knew about it, and he tried to help but years of solitude makes things awkward. He hated that feeling and the impotence that came with it. Of course. I knew but nothing more than a good genjutsu couldn't do. His laid-back attitude really got under his skin fast. Don't you care Ab, I care about all of you, just like you were here listening because you were worried too. I was here for the same reason, and I hated to see her like that, but losing our heads won't help us at all. Without missing a beat, he changed the page and walked towards the party. 
Sasuke, you must know when is time to release your bottle up emotions. He raised his hand in a carefree way. I don't want to. See you explode like a balloon or getting fat because you couldn't let your feelings out. We are humans, we can't stop feeling things, but it is what you do with those feelings that make you a better ninja or a better person, think about it. With that said he left him alone in his thoughts. The party went along all night with Naruto and Narumi dancing while Happy was having an eating contest. As for the last Uchiha, Sasuke was a little far away from the spotlight trying and failing to get away from some civilian girls who wanted to talk, all of this Kakashi. Watched with amusement in his lone eye, he was proud of his team, and quite frankly he was getting attached to this crazy team. The next day Team 7 was ready to leave, but the people of Waves wouldn't let them go before a farewell. Walking along the streets they got gifts such as apples, letters, and gear for the journey. Gifts that civilians show how grateful they were to them, even with the little they have. When they arrived at the bridge, the family who preserved with hope for the last decade of terror and misery were there to say their goodbyes. Inari who was the first to lose hope and the first to get it back gave a hug to Narumi. I'm going to miss you Nei chan He let a big grin of happiness, for his moody self was lost in the past as he looked into the bright future ahead. Me too squirt. Narumi with a grin identical pick him up and used him like a ragdoll, safe to say that he was seeing the light. Narumi, you're killing him. Happy whines, as he watched his friend being squished to death, and said friend was pale like a corpse. Narumi looking at the dead, Inari, she panicked and started slapping him silly. Don't you die on me. Your mother is over there, she going to kill me. She whispers, harshly, to the unconscious kid, for her mother had her back on them as she talks with the leader of the team with Tazuna. With a snort of amusement, both Uchiha and Dragneel turned away from the scene while Happy tried his best to separate his friend from Narumi. After saying their goodbyes Team 7 walked upon the now named Narumi Bridge towards home. The End Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.